Hello and welcome everyone, this is Kalabovich coming to you with another Flesh and Blood video. This is going to be a draft guide about Lexi, the Elemental Ranger, in the Tales of Aria draft format. If you don't know what the drafting means, what the drafting in Flesh and Blood, especially in Tales of Aria, is, there's a video on my YouTube channel uh, about that, so go check it out. Uh, but for now, let's dive deep into what Le who Lexi is and what Lexi does. Now, Lexi is one of the three heroes uh, available for you to play in uh, the Tales of Safari draft format. She's the Elemental Ranger, there's also Briar, the Elemental Runeblade, and Oldham, the Elemental Guardian. Now, what Lexi does, she is, as you can see, hopefully, on the close-up, she's an ele Elemental Ranger hero uh, with the usual 420 stat line. I wonder what, what that is about. She has Essence of Ice and Lightning. Now, since Monarch, we've been getting heroes with those talents, which means not only can they get Ranger cards into their deck, also Elemental, also Ice, also Lightning, also Generic. So, deck building is wide open. Also, she's got a once per turn action. Turn a face down card in your arsenal face up. If it's a Lightning card, I mean, it, if it has lightning written down here, uh, your next attack this turn against go again. If it's an ice card, create a frostbite token under target hero's control and obviously go again. Now, what is frostbite? Frostbite is a token, uh, a token aura that says cards and activated abilities you control cost an additional resource. And remember, you put it, uh, you, you give it to your opponent. At the beginning of your end phase or when you play a card or activate an ability, destroy Frostbite. So this is a way of taxing your opponents, of making them pay more for what they want to do. So disrupting their plans, this is all what, I mean, half of what Lexi is about. Um, so as Azalea before her, she is doing a lot with her arsenal. That is the uh, main source of her advantage, but it's also quite difficult to manage, and we'll get to that in a moment. Now, her token weapon is Shiva, meet timbers, uh, a, an elemental ranger weapon bow. It's two-handed, as every bow should be, I think. It says, once per turn instant, pay one resource. You may put an arrow card from your hand face up into an empty arsenal zone you control. If you do... Uh, choose one, it either gains plus one attack until end of turn, or it gains dominate until end of turn, which means the defending hero can defend the attack with more than one card from their hand. Obviously, they can block with their items, with their equipment, or they can block with uh, defense reactions from their arsenal zone. Okay, so what this all means is she needs some arrows. And she has a ton of arrows available for her in this draft format. She's got Blizzard Bolt, she's got Buzz Bolt, she's got Bolt and Shots, so two in one, special deal. She's got Snapshots, she's got Frazzles, she's got Dazzling Crescendos, she's got Cold Waves, she's got Flake Outs, she's got Chilling Ice Veins. And aside from these arrows, she obviously has the usual elemental attacks from Lightning and from lightning and ice. Okay, so what is her game plan? I mean, for Lexi, there are two main game plans. She can either go wide on her lightning abilities or go tall, usually on the ice abilities. By go wide, I mean playing several attacks in a turn, hopefully with breakpoints with attack values of four and over. Uh, when, it, when we're talking about going tall or going high, it means she's playing one or two buffs before she attacks with an arrow for 10 or even more. Okay? So, her game plan revolves, revolves mainly around her bow and the arsenal zone that she's got. And given that Shiver has two options and uh, it can give additional attack abilities to your bolts, to your, uh, to your arrows, from your, your playing from your quiver. It can either up their attack or it can give dominate, like instantly. So maybe not exactly like Bravo, because these do not attack for 10 or more on the, by themselves, but having dominate on demand is a huge thing for her game plan, because if you can get your opponent down to 10 or lower, and you can uh, play a dominating attack each turn, you are more than likely to whittle your opponent down from that, uh, from that low threshold that they have down to zero. Okay. There is also 
something negative connected to this because shiver as the boat doesn't have an attack value on its own which means this is the only of the three heroes that can't attack with their weapon by itself the weapon is here only to allow you to play arrows and to enhance those arrows uh, so lexi is very much an aggressor she wants to keep the pressure keep the tempo on her opponent uh, but her defense is not the greatest as uh, not only does she not have any defense reactions while the other two heroes do in this format uh, some of her cards some of the important cards that she's playing are instants which have no defense and ball lightnings have zero defense and well while the arrows have three defense you you have a limited quiver you literally have a limited quiver of arrows so the number of the attacks you can play during a match is very limited so you have to be careful about that okay so you have to be careful about getting fatigued especially in the matchup against Oldham but we're gonna get to that in a moment also you have to remember that all of these arrows I mean all of these elemental arrows aside from bolt and shot are elemental arrow attacks and all of these as all of the class cards for heroes in Tales of Aria have fusion half of these is ice fusion the other half is lightning fusion and what fusion is what fusion does is uh, if you have if you're playing a card with fusion you can reveal uh, a card from a certain element so an ice card or a lightning card and uh, then the attack or the card or the ability has an additional effect an example for frazzle if Frazzle was fused, whenever an attack would deal damage this turn, instead it deals that much damage, plus one. Or Chilling Ice Vein, it has Ice Fusion. If Chilling Ice Vein was fused, whenever an attack deals damage to a hero this turn, they discard a card unless they pay one resource. And obviously the Lightning cards either give you Go Again, the, ice, uh, sorry, the Lightning Fusion either give you Go Again or deal more damage to your opponent while the ice cards tags the opponent by making them discard cards making their cards more expensive on your turn so it's difficult for them to react to what you're doing or giving them more frostbite tokens because that's cool literally um so that's what this all means um also when it comes to to your turn okay so let, let's now think about how a turn works for Lexi, and I'm going to show you uh, some examples for that in a moment. When it comes to the cost of cards that you are playing, cards for Lexi, uh, I mean the class cards, cost either 0 or 1. Lightning cards cost 0 or 1. Ice cards cost 0, 1 or 2. Using the bow costs 1. So it can add up to uh to some uh, some bigger values but usually lexi is uh alongside lightning briar is the hero that doesn't need that many resources to get going i mean uh most of her arrows cost one so you can pay one to use the bow uh put the arrow in your arsenal in your quiver and pay one for the arrow to shoot your opponent with and it either shoots for four or five with dominate or five or six without dominate which are really high values for just two resources so i would like to take you through a typical or rather a typically good full lexi four plus one i.e five card turn to show you the potential that she has let's start with the go wide variant uh, which means playing several attacks several decently sized attacks in a row so you're starting with a shock striker a lightning attack in your arsenal it is face down and your hand consists of entwine lightning red frazzle yellow ball lightning blue and lightning surge red a rather good hand with one arrow several more attacks etc so what what you can do with this hand to maximize your attack so uh for this one and i thought about it for a moment there might be a better combination of uh, of actions but let's let's take a look you play entwine lightning red it is it has lightning fusion so we can just show lightning surge or ball lightning to the opponent probably ball lightning because you will be pitching that in a moment 
uh, if Entwine Lightning goes Fuse, it gains Go again, and it has four attacks. So it has the break point, so it usually is going to deal some damage. After that, you are going to use Lexi's ability. Uh, show your opponent the Shock Striker over here. So your next attack gains Go again. You play the Shock Striker by pitching Ball Lightning Blue. You still have two resources left. And you're attacking for four with Go again yet again. After the attack resolves, you can use your Shiver, the once per turn instant. You load up your bow with a Frazzle. And depending on the situation, you can give, give it plus one or you can give it Dominate. I would probably give it Dominate right now. And you're using your last resource to attack with it, to shoot it. And you're also fusing it, which means you're attacking for four or five, four with Dominate or five. And whenever an attack would deal damage this turn, which means this Frazzle, instead it deals that much damage plus one. Another typical turn this, uh, in this case, uh, when it comes to going high or just doing one huge attack, is with this hand. You start with a yellow weave eyes uh, over here in your arsenal, and it is face down. And your hand consists of Overflex red, Blizzard Bolt red, Blizzard Bolt blue, and Polar Blast yellow. So, a decent hand once again. I mean, that's why I'm showcasing these uh, rather uh, highlights for Lexi. So you're starting your turn by uh, using Lexi's ability, showing your opponent Weave Eyes, giving them a Frostbite token, so it's going to be slightly more difficult for them to uh, proceed on their next turn. Okay, Then you are playing, uh, playing the Weave Eyes so that your arsenal zone is empty. The next Ice or Elemental attack action card you play this turn gains plus two attack. If it's fused, it gains Dominate. And you go again so we can uh, proceed with your turn. Then, for one resource, you play Overflex, leaving you with two resources. And here's the thing. If you're pitching a blue card, you're left with two resources, so you, can, uh, so you don't have to reload from Overflex. You can activate your Shiver and then shoot with Shiver. But let's say you have a yellow card here to pitch with. Uh, and then you have one fewer resource, and then you can use your reload ability. So there is even flexibility with what you need to pitch. But let's say it's a blue, so we don't have to use reload. So we're using the next resource to load up with Blizzard Bolt, and given that we are going to fuse it, we can give it plus one from Shiver, because it's going to get Dominate anyway. And with our last resource, we are shooting the Blizzard Bolt and showing your opponent a Polar Blast. Um, which means we're attacking them for 2, plus 4, plus 5, plus 1. So it is 12, right? It was fused, so whenever an attack deals damage to a hero this turn, create a Frostbite token under their control, taxing them even further. And it has Dominate from Weave Eye, so they cannot really block it. So on average, it's going to deal 9 damage to them. And given that you're starting your... Uh, fight with 20 health, that's almost half. That's huge. But not only that, at the end of your turn, you're going to put your Polar Blast into your arsenal, and on your next turn, not only can you give them another Frostbite token, but you can use the ability of if Polar Blast is played from Arsenal, draw a card, and given that it costs one, such as Electrify, such as So Tomorrow, you are going to get some additional resources on your next turn, making your, uh, your next turn even better. Or just very, very good. Okay, so a couple of nice uh, examples for really nice turns um, from Lexi. Okay, now I have to talk a bit about Arsenal because Arsenaling, using your Arsenal, is one of the most difficult things when it comes to playing with Lexi. And give, well, given that she is, uh, all her abilities are based on the Arsenal, well, that is kind of obvious, is it not? So there are cards that are, let's say you are left with one card in your hand at the end of your turn. Do you put it in your arsenal or not? Because that is currently the main question, in my opinion. And a lot of cards, or all the cards that have go again, are really good targets to put in your market. So something like a ball lightning, something like an electrify, something like, uh, like a lightning attack that you can show with Lexi and give it go again. All of these are really good and really easy to put in your market. 
Okay. The problem begins with some of the ice attacks that don't have go again. So when you have something like an icy encounter or a winter's grasp, and you're thinking whether to put it in your arsenal or not, these are just attacks for four, five, or six. They cost two, and they don't have really good abilities. But in my re most recent draft, when I played Lexi, I came to a conclusion that yes, these ones that attack for five or for six are actually really good cards to put in your market. Because let's say that you have a hand consisting of um, uh, consisting of some cards, and let's say you put a red winter's grasp into your market. So, sorry, not your market, into your arsenal. And your next hand consists of four cards, whatever they are. And your opponent is doing something which usually consists of attacking you. So if you have this Winter's Grasp here, your plan is to block with two cards or five or six. Receive pure damage. Then on your turn, you're pitching a yellow or a blue. Sorry, before pitching, you're using Lexi's ability. You're giving your opponent a Frostbite token. Then you're pitching a yellow or a blue. You're playing Winter's Grasp, you're doing those 5 or 6 damage, which means either the opponent uh, uses 2 cards from their hand to block the attack, or they receive damage, which is, well, your main game plan. And with the last card, this is the card with Go Again, or with a special ability such as an Electrify or a Polar Blast, and you put it in your market, and you continue. Even if, even if this is another Winter's Grasp for 6, you can still have a decent turn because you only need to draw a yellow or a blue to do the same turn again. So this is not such a bad deal. Bigger problem comes from arrows. Let's say your last card in your hand is a red blizzard bolt. Do you put it in your market or not? And honestly, it's almost the same situation as the previous one. Uh, as the Icy Encounter or Winter's Grasp example. Because if you put it in your market, you can still block with two cards if you know your opponent will be doing something really aggressive. And then you just pitch one, play this for five. It is kind of a break point, so they have to, they have to block it with one or two cards. I mean, with two cards or with one card and receive damage. And... With your last card, you put it in the market to hopefully have a better turn next time. So if you have a clunky turn, it is still good to block with two and leave two, uh, use uh, use one as a resource to shoot uh, the market attack and market uh, sorry and arsenal uh, the last card. So that's what uh, the problems with arsenaling are, but you can work around that in my opinion. Okay, now let's go to matchups in. Uh, in the Lexi Mirror, it is all about math and getting the damage through, okay? So you have to know how many resources you need, which arrows you can shoot, and, uh, well, obviously not having any clunky turns, four red card turns are kind of a problem, but if you go for the uh, just shooting uh, an arrow from your arsenal uh, by pitching one, and uh, using two additional ones as as just block cards, yeah, you can kind of move around it, but it's all about math. It's all about calculating how much damage you can deal versus how much damage you need to block. But you have to remember that uh, there are some thresholds that you do not uh, want to to go lower than when it comes to health. I mean, if you're over ten health, you're usually fine. I mean. There are some situations when your opponent can do a turn similar to one I've shown you with Go High, and that is something like 12 Dominate. And it is difficult to, um, to just block. Uh, but the biggest threshold in the mirror is going down to 2 health. Because if you are down to 2 health, the, it only takes one red arrow with Dominate and you're dead. Or even a yellow arrow would dominate if your hand is really weak and only consists of two blocks. Okay, uh, next up we have the Briar matchup. And it is also about dealing damage. 
and it is about keeping the pressure on Briar because Briar is at her best when she has her full four or five card turns. So you want to really dig, dig deep, deal a lot of damage to Briar so that she has to block with some of her hand and thus her attacks get weaker and she can't get a full Rosetta Thorn turn on you. Okay. Um, uh, the last one is Oldham, and this is the most difficult matchup for Lexi, in my opinion, because Oldham not only can just block for three, he can use his defense reactions to prevent some damage. He has some funky turns where he can even ice your last card if you're not playing uh, correctly, or if you're sequencing, it could be a bit out of, uh, out of sync. Uh, and they can ice reaction a card from your hand on top of your deck, and uh, you're losing a bit of tempo. Uh, but the biggest problem of Oldham is that they have a really good weapon that can tax you in the mid game and the late game. And although uh, you can let a, one or two attacks in without a lot of uh, without a lot of thought, uh, once you get lower than ten health, it can become really dangerous. And for Oldham, the plan is to whittle you down and fatigue you uh, because they are the defender and you are the attacker and your quiver is very limited. So from time to time, it is a good option to sideboard for Oldham because remember, you know which hero you're playing against before you have to present a deck to your opponents to shuffle and cut. So if you know you're playing against Oldham, as, an, as a simple example, uh, if you have a good sideboard, you can add two red arrows and a yellow or a blue card to pitch and up your count from 30 to 33, but most uh, importantly, count uh, up your attack count by two red arrows and every point of damage counts in that matchup. Okay. Thank you for watching so far. I hope this was not uh, too lengthy of a video. This is part one general concepts. Next part, part two, is going to be about card evaluation, about what you need to pick and how high you need to pick it for your deck to be really good. And see you then.